Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I have something a little different that I want to get on camera. This is a brand new in the box 1991 Toad Croaker from the comic book and television series Bucky O'Hare. Being that the seal on this box was already open and there seems to be quite a few of these out there, I thought I would go ahead and assemble this one on camera. I'm not sure how popular this particular video will be, but I thought this would be a cool thing to throw up on YouTube for our archival purposes, where you get to see exactly what came in one of these boxes, as well as the assembly process, and the final piece assembled nice and spiffy as if it were 1991 again. For those that don't know, Bucky O'Hare was a short-lived 1991 television series. It hit the TV screens during the whole Ninja Turtle craze, and right off the bat they dropped a wave of toys along with the first season, as well as a whole lot of other merchandise, an NES game, and even a beat-em-up arcade game before it all just kinda went kaput. It's basically Buck Rogers meets the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I've always found it a pretty fascinating series. What's particularly interesting about this series is that many people view it as a TMNT ripoff, but it actually predates the Ninja Turtles as a comic book. It was created by Larry Hama, who also wrote the much-beloved original G.I. Joe comic book, and right off the bat it was created to be a big franchise that just didn't quite pan out. Now I don't want to spend too much time on this intro, so let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box. As you can see, the seal was already broken when I purchased this, but everything is still packed nice and tight in there. It includes quite a few pieces, but assembly should be nice and simple as it normally was designed to be on these sort of toy vehicles. Here's a better view of everything out of its box, just so you can see all the individual pieces a bit better. According to the instructions, the green bubble is called the bellows noise unit, and the little balloon thing is known as the reed. You also have the body top and bottom, as well as the left and right engine bottom half, and we'll get to the pieces still sealed in the bag in a bit. Here's a closer look at the instructions so you can see all the step-by-step -step details, as well as sticker placement. There's also a really cool comic ad on the back which included an offer to subscribe to the comic book at 6 issues for $12 or 12 issues for $24. You could also mail away for a poster for $5. As usual, you did have to include postage and allow a whopping 6-8 to eight weeks for delivery. And here's a closer look at the sticker sheet. Eh, they do look a bit worn. Keep in mind they were manufactured way back in 1991, but all in all they're not too bad. Alright, well, without further ado, let's get to the assembly. According to the first step, we need to gather the reed, the bellows noise unit, and the body bottom. We're going to insert the sound reed into the bellows noise unit, all the way in until it's tightly sealed. This is what's going to make that croaking sound once we get to smashing some toads. It does take some finagling to get it in there all the way, but no problem so far. We then need to fit the bellows unit into the body bottom until it snaps down like so. It should fit nice and flat within the inner tray. Now for the next step we're going to need the body top as well as the left and right engine bottom halves. There should be an L and R within each half of the engines indicating which is for the left side and which is for the right side. And now we just need to snap those two engines into place. I'm finding I'm having a lot of trouble getting that left side to snap down into place all the way, probably just due to how old this plastic is. But with some off-camera action, I was able to get it in there, thankfully without breaking anything. The right side, on the other hand, fit nice and easily. Go figure. Now for the next step, we need to align the rear thruster tabs on the body top with the rear of the body bottom and snap them together. This step once again took a bit of finagling, but eventually I was able to get it without too much trouble. And now it's time to open up the bag containing the remaining pieces, which amazingly was still sealed. Until now. This bag contains the back race shield, the left and right avionic blisters, the side guns, as well as the steering bar. For step 4, we need to turn the body right side up and snap the back race shield onto the body rear. And for step 5, we need to grab the left and right avionic blisters.
We're going to grab our ship and then snap those in, like so. Next, we're going to grab our steering bar and side guns. I'll get a nice close-up of those for the camera before I remove them from the sprues for good. So here's the steering bar loose and ready to be assembled. It actually has some nice details to it, I think. Anyway, we just need to snap the steering bar into the hole in the cockpit. Little bit of resistance, but it eventually snaps right in. Now the final step is just to snap in the left and right side guns. The first one seemed to go in a lot easier than the steering bar. And the second wasn't too much trouble either. And there we go, we have a completely assembled 1991 Toad Croaker, fresh out of its original box. Very nice I must say, it almost feels like visiting the ghost of Christmas past. We'll just take one last look before I add the decals off camera. And I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. You may notice that I might have taken some liberties with the application of the decals. The reason for this was the directions weren't so clear on exactly where the placement was supposed to be for each sticker, nor did they even match the placement on the front of the box. I tried to google some images, but even then every picture seems to have different placements for certain stickers. So I just kind of placed them the way I thought looked best. I don't think it's too big of a deal in this case, although looking at it now I kind of wish I had placed the Toad Croaker sticker off to the side of the front of the ship. It just looks a little bit too clean and perfect in the center. But all in all, I think it's a pretty nice ship, and you'd be hard-pressed to find another this clean out of the box. It's very cool to look at a 1991 vintage toy brand like this new in 2022. If we take a look at the cockpit, you'll see that we do have a little bit of left and right motion on the steering column. The guns will also move left and right about that far before they're hindered by the dashboard. Yeah, we could go ahead and throw some figures on there and see what that looks like. What's cool is that Deadeye Duck has four arms, so he can kind of pilot the ship and fire the two guns simultaneously. His bottom arms can't quite reach the steering column, but it still looks pretty cool as Bucky hangs out on the back. The toads in this line stand kind of funky, almost like they were designed to be knocked down like dominoes. You can then come back down for another pass and showcase this ship's main attraction, which is that you can crush the toads with the bottom bubble and it'll make that croaking noise. You do have to wait for the bubble to refill with air before finishing off the second toad, however. It's a very cool gimmick, I think. Well, there you have it. That is the Toad Croaker. All in all, I think it's a pretty cool vehicle for a toy line that unfortunately never reached its full potential. I often wonder if franchises like this will have some sort of resurgence in the future. But for now, I guess we'll have to make do with the memories. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Toads beware, you're looking for 